I'm just going to do this quick Facebook Live tonight. Um, in just a couple minutes, I will start um, um, this is just to go through the directions on how to make the tissue box card. Uh, yesterday, everything on my side looked like it was going well, but apparently my video stopped. So um, I didn't get to you get, didn't get to see this card being demonstrated. So I'm just going to give it another minute, make sure everything is going smooth, and then I will get started. Hi, Teresa. So if you were on last night, I want to say thanks for joining. Hopefully if you had your kits with you, you were able to get most of them put together. Um, the card little box is just a little tricky if you don't know, if you haven't seen it made. So I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time with the whole card. Um, I am going to show you how to put it together. I'm going to show you how I made the box, how we do the tissue. All right, so it's 5.30, we're gonna get started. So when I talk about a tissue card box, or tissue box card, however you wanna call it, when you open up this greeting card here, there's a little box inside with a little tissue sticking out. Um, and this is a get well, sorry to hear you're not feeling well card. Um, it is bulky, so if you were going to stick it through the mail, um, you need to keep in mind that it is slightly on the thicker side, so you might need some extra postage. But if you're dropping it off to somebody, um, it you know will fit in our envelopes just fine. Okay. So I know I went through some of this stuff yesterday in the the live, but I'm gonna go through it again. So for this card, I used uh, Forever Fern stamp set. Excuse me, um, paper and the dies that go with it, which I believe are called the Flourishing Greenery dies. I cut those out in some of the coordinating uh, colors that go with the Designer Series paper. This is current stuff, so yeah, it's Forever Greenery Designer Series paper. Um, and then I did a few pieces in gold just to add some accent. For the ovals here, I used our layering oval dies. I used the largest regular oval and then I use the largest scallop. Now for this particular one the oval that would have fit inside this one is too small for the greeting and that's why I use the scallop with the solid uh, one behind. But either way it's enough to kind of give a little bit of dimension to it standing out. Alright and so what you're going to need for the card is a regular card base that's uh, five and a half by eight and a half, and then you score it at four and a quarter. I added a layer of just jade, and this is four by five and a quarter. And then the designer series paper I chose is this one right here, which is three and three quarters by five. So I'm going to put those layers together. And I find that it's better to do the front of your card before doing the box. Um, I found it harder to do it the other way around. All right, and we'll stamp our greeting. So I'm going to use the Just Jade ink pad. The stamp set that I used is called Sorry for Everything. This is actually a retired stamp set. Uh, but I really liked the greetings on it, which is why I hung on to it. And again, when you're doing my card kits, use whatever stamps you have on hand. And this is going to go right in the middle. And then the other part says uh, to hear you're not feeling well. And I'm going to do that by using Pear Pizzazz. I'm getting ink on my fingers. Oops.
And then I just stuck this to the oval using our Stampin' Seal. And if you haven't tried the Stampin' Seal, I recommend it. If you're used to our Stampin' Snail, um, this is much stickier than the Stampin' Snail. And you get more adhesive um, in the refills. Okay. And then the way I just assembled is I just added a little bit of adhesive to the back and then I start with whatever layer from top to bottom and then I just keep adding a little bit of adhesive you could use glue dots um, I didn't use dimensionals too much on the front because I didn't want to add so much extra bulk Now when I am assembling, I'm going to keep in mind where the leaves sit on the card because I don't want it too far off the top, otherwise it will um, get all squishy when you stick it in the card, uh, stick it in the envelope. Have these little gold leaves you know I'm rushing I should take my time and then I won't get ink all over me and the sail will work right and then I just tuck these in and I liked that it just added just a little pop of shimmer to the card and then to stick it onto my card base I am going to use some dimensionals And then I added um, a tough to see, but this little bow right here. It's actually a double bow. And that is also from the Forever Greenery set. Um, if you were to look on page 108 of our Stampin' Up! annual catalog, it is a suite. And it's right here. It's a Forever Greenery trim combo pack. So it's like this gold. Um, I don't know if it's it's not really like a cording it's almost like a, a thread because it's not quite as thick as a baker's twine I guess um, and it comes with this other ribbon and you kind of look at it to me it kind of has like a look of like gauze I haven't used it yet um, so what I did was I just took the trim fold a piece in half here and you could cut it if that messes with you tying a bow I'm just gonna leave it for now and make a bow and I will trim it so you get the size you want the thing I really liked about this twine is the way the edges frail, uh, fray. So I'm just going to trim a little bit over the trash. I'm going to take a glue dot. And then if you can see the ends kind of separate a little bit so then you can see like all the pieces of thread that make up that little twine I think it's pretty and then the last thing I put on the front of the card is these gold 
gems that I had. And I did three. One of each of the three different sizes, just like that. All right, so I'm gonna move this aside because I wanna show you how to make the box. Okay. And so because I wasn't prepped, um, I did everything ahead of time, but I'm gonna show you the box, um, how to cut it and all that stuff. Okay. So you need a piece of cardstock that measures five and a half by three. So this is just a piece that I had left over from cutting out the oval and some of the leaves. I know it's already at five and a half. Oh, smidge over five and a half. Good thing I checked. So we'll cut that off and then turn it, cut it to three. Okay. So then what you want to do is score it and if you have your score, simply scored scoring board, um, you score and you move the stylus when you store, you'd be moving to the right. But because I'm using the trimmer, I score, I move to the left. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you don't use your cutting blade, which is your dock blade on our trimmer. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is score it at one inch. Slide it over to two and a half, three and a half, and then at five. Okay. I am going to fold. Fold and then use the bone folder to give you a nice crease. Okay, and so when you have this piece, you have your one, two and a half, three and a half, and your five scored lines. So you have this little edge here that is a half inch, and you have this section right here. This is going to be the top of the box. This is where the little tissue is going to stick out. Okay, so just keep in mind where the half inch side is. And then what I did is I'm going to take a post-it note, which, where did my post-it note go? Oh boy. It's probably stuck to something now. And you know the thing is, I'll probably find it when we're all done. But I had just moved it so it's in front of me. Oh, stuff, stuff. Always the way. So weird. All right, well, I'm going to take a post-it note that has writing on it. You can use any post-it note you have. What I did was I took um, a retired punch. This was a scalloped oval punch we've had a long time ago. Um, you could certainly use a die to line it up, but I liked this way. So I'm punching out on the post-it note and I'm making sure that I'm punching over the sticky part. And then I'm going to place this onto the box, centering the opening as best I can. Okay. And then that lets me know this is where I need to punch. So I'm not guessing. Now, obviously using a die, you'll see where you're putting the oval. Um, but if you're doing multiple of these, I, a punch to me is a little is faster. Okay, so then it punches out that little opening. Okay, so like I said, this is the top of your box that we just did, and you can see it's open on the sides. I didn't worry about closing the box in because I want to make sure it's going to close right. So when you assemble the box and you fold it, keeping in mind this is your top, and you wrap it around, this little half inch becomes the flap that goes over. And the reason you want to go over is because when you look at the box from the top, you see the scored fold or the scored edge. If you were to put it together like this, I mean, it, it may not make much of a difference, but it doesn't give you that clean edge. You can actually see the seam of the paper. 
And that's why I liked having it go like this. No one's going to see the back. That's going to be stuck to the card. So what you're going to do is add adhesive on the inside of this flap here. And I'm using tear and tape because it's a little bit stronger than this uh, stamp and seal. Uh, you could try the stamp and seal plus. I have not tried that yet. I should, but I haven't. All right. And so you fold that over. Right, and then there's your box. To put it in the in the card itself, if you have your box sitting up, I'm just pushing it with my fingers to kind of flatten it out. And I'm just gonna run the bowl and folder over it just to kind of smooth it down. I want it to be nice and straight when it goes in the card so it doesn't add any more bulk than it already does. So if you're looking at the back side of it, Here's the seam that we just folded over, and then this is the solid piece, it's the bottom. So I'm going to add adhesive to the, this piece right here and to this piece right here. For the sake of time, I'm just going to use uh, my Stampin' Seal, and I'm just going to go right on the edges here, the top and the bottom. You could use um, a liquid glue or you could use, um, like I said, the tear and tape, anything that's got a good seal to it because when the card opens and closes, you don't want this to pop out. And then the way that you add it to the inside of the card is I'm taking this part that has the adhesive, this is the bottom, and I'm going to line that bottom edge with the fold of the card base, just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to take the top of the card and I'm going to fold it closed and just push down. So now when you open the card, your box is attached to the top and the bottom. And you can see it opens and closes and it flattens. And so now to add your little tissue. So if you have a two-ply tissue, which I think most tissues are two-ply, you want to separate it. Um, you could certainly put the whole tissue in the box, but remember that will add just a little bit more bulk to the card, especially if you're mailing it. Um, so I'm separating it. And then also it's just a little gesture. I mean, you're not really giving the card in hopes that someone uses the tissue that's in it. It's just more of a, hey, I hope you're feeling better. And then you tuck the tissue in with a little bit of it sticking from the top. And then when you close the card, there's a tissue. So I'm actually going to put this other piece of tissue. This is the one that I would have finished for you guys last night. And just tuck the tissue in there. Okay. And for the card that I did last night, um, I took a piece of paper that was left over in the designer series pack. It's a one inch wide and a five and a half across because I just measured it. Um, is it five and a half? No. Yeah. Oh, five and a half across. And then I stuck it on the inside. And then I always um, do my envelopes, but I'm not going to do an envelope tonight, but I'll show you. So I don't think the envelope may have gotten shown yesterday. So this is the envelope that I did to match the card. And all I did was I measure out a piece of uh, designer series paper that's uh, between two and a half and two and three quarters, depending on what I have left over, by six inches. You can go slightly smaller. I just find with a little bit of overhang, it helps me to cut it straight. But I open the flap. I would add adhesive to the outside of the envelope. Stick the paper down, making sure that the pattern is in the right direction so that when you close the envelope flap, this picture isn't upside down. And then I would stick it down turn it over and I would just trim the edge of anything that hangs over and then you have a pretty envelope that matches the card and you could even decorate the front of the envelope if you know you're not mailing it with some designer series paper or if you have the matching stamp set to the forever fern you could also do that so all right so that is the little tissue box 
I'm sorry that this did not work last night and it took me a little bit of time to get on here tonight but I wanted to make sure that I didn't leave you hanging so I thank you guys for joining um, stay tuned for my next set of to goes and have a great night